Caps win! Caps win! Caps win! It's time to recap. The Capitals defeat the Carolina Hurricanes in this completely important, super meaningful game. And before we go any further with this, let's just start with hockey is back, people. It's back in the dwindling days of July. Hockey is back. I sat right here and watched hockey on my screen last night, and it was glorious. The players lined up, the anthems were sung, the puck was dropped, Ovechkin scores! And who else would it be? Ovechkin scores the first goal for the Capitals back in the 2020 NHL playoffs. I had my money on Vrana, full disclosure, but Ovechkin scores and I wouldn't have it any other way. And where else could he score from? From his office, on the left wing, at the circle, one-timer, past Mrazic. I think it's kind of funny, he actually shanked his first one-timer attempt and it hits the post and we're all, oh my god, okay, oh my god, he scores, oh yes, yes! But enough fanboying, let's actually talk about the game itself. It actually wasn't that bad of a game. It happened. If I had to rate it somewhere between preseason, midseason, and postseason, this game kind of felt like somewhere in here, maybe like a late October, early November. When the game started, there was an early penalty kill and we'd say, oh, here we go again, but it was kind of an okay penalty kill. And then almost immediately after, we get our first power play look and it was a okay power play until the last two seconds when Ovechkin scores and everyone goes crazy. Welcome back hockey. But really, that's what you want from a game like this. It's just shaking the rust off. You want plenty of looks at the PK. You want plenty of looks at the power play because you want as many reps as possible on those special teams to take you into the postseason and get those wheels moving again. That's all the first period was, is get those wheels moving again. And then like it was nothing, like it was some March, April game and they've been playing for seven months, the Russian trio go tic-tac goal and it's two nothing caps. How do you say goal in Russian? Say. Say. I don't know what she's saying. But that, and it's great seeing the guys play that well together this early coming back into the postseason. Orlov, slap pass to Ovechkin. Ovechkin takes the shot. No, he doesn't. He passes it to Kuznetsov in front, but Morozik has to respect the shot, and Kuzi's all alone in front, tap in goal. And this early into things, it's kind of hard to tell. Is it the Caps playing really well, or is it Carolina playing really poorly? We don't know, but all I know is the Caps are up 2-0, and we have a lot of hockey left to play. In all fairness, Carolina was without Dougie Hamilton, so it might be a little bit of both, but let's move on. Period two, and it's a slow start for the Caps. It's a breakaway for Carolina. Oh, great lift check by Carlson. Oh, the puck's laying right in the crease, but Kempney swats it away. Oh, it's off the post, but we're safe. Until we go straight into a penalty kill, Haglin delay of game. But this was actually a better penalty kill. It only lasted a minute before Wilson draws a tripping penalty, but it was much better than the penalty kill in the first period. And then the minute long abbreviated power play that follows was actually a better power play. Better than we saw in the first at least. I think this was really the time when the guys really started getting the wheels moving. But then you could also see a little bit of fatigue starting to set in. You could tell they haven't played in four months. Because we then almost immediately go into another 4-on-4. Four four. Haglin high sticking the same time as Tara Vinen for tripping. And Carolina got the better of us this time. I'm starting to see a pattern here and it's kind of a pattern I saw later in the season for the Caps. Penalty trouble. If they're going to do anything in this postseason, they have to get out of the penalty box. They're not doing any good sitting their top two lines on the bench with no chance of scoring. But despite Carolina looking great in the 4-on-4 four and, four and getting plenty of shots on net, the brick wall that is Braden Holpe says, not today, and he keeps it a 2-1 to one game. And speaking of Holpe, he had a great game. The one goal that he lets in, I don't even blame on him. He was near flawless at every other point of the game, and he was truly showing off his form. And then, just as I think the rest of the team is starting to drag their feet, Wilson, late in his minute-long shift, takes a hit, shakes it off, says, okay, you're gonna let me go by? Here comes Ovechkin idling down the left side of the ice. Wilson cross ice to Ovechkin's goal! 3-1 caps, two for Ovechkin! C-A-P-S, caps, caps, caps! So what does Brendan Moore do? He pulls Morozik. Now you could argue that he was going to pull Morozik anyway, but probably not until the third period. You're not fooling anyone. You're gonna pull the goalie in this game in one of two spots. One, through the halfway point of the game. 
10 minutes into the second period. Two, at the start of the third period. We were already 13 minutes into the period when this third goal happened, and that's when he decides to pull Morazic. You can't fool me. You pulled him because you were scared that more goals were going in. And more goals almost did go in. Kovalchuk coming down the wing, wide open shot. Oh, he doesn't take the shot. He passes it? We're not paying you to pass the puck. Shoot the dang thing. But here comes Vrana zipping down the wing. He takes a shot. Okay, good save, Reimer. Good save. Michael Kempney has a great shift. He joins the rush and he's right in front. He's shot. Oh, he was so close to scoring. Oh, just this close. Ooh, but he draws a penalty and this is actually a really good power play. Great entry into the zone. Good puck movement. Couple of shots. I love seeing it. Despite some laggy legs underneath them, I really think the team started to settle in. Let's go to the third period. And as the third period starts, we get a look at Vitek Vanatek, the check-in net. Say that five times fast. As expected, Reardon's gonna pull Holpe for the third period and put in his backup goaltender. Unfortunately, it can't be Samsonov, but let's not go there. And Vanacek is tested early and he looks solid. And here comes the penalty wagon. Orlov takes another minor penalty, his second of the game, tisk tisk. And about 12 seconds later, Eller with a high sticking penalty. It's a long three on five. And once again, the Caps are showing that they have a knack for getting in penalty trouble. This has been a problem repeatedly throughout this season. After a dominating start in the beginning of the season, come the new year, penalty after penalty after penalty, you gotta stop getting in the penalty box, please. And talk about a trial by fire for Vanacek. He got no help from the guys in front of him. He looked okay during the five on three, but it's still a five on three for about a minute and 45 seconds. And needless to say, it's three to two Washington. But here we go back to five on five and Jake the Snake with another great shot. Oh, he's so close. Keep shooting the puck, man. You're going to score. Followed by another great chance by Wilson. Followed by another great chance by Kempney. Man, Kempney was all over the map this game. And we're glad he did because Carlson goes awkwardly into the boards with about 13 minutes left in the game. And... That doesn't look good, but he skates off and he's on his own power, so maybe it's just precautionary. We're gonna be optimistic. He's fine, he's fine, he's fine. Carlson, chill out, man. It's just an exhibition game. We need you for the next two months, please. But somebody didn't give Hathaway the exhibition memo. He comes bulldozing down the wing late in the game, trying to score again. It's a telltale sign of how well conditioned these guys are. And you need that right now. The team that can skate the longest is gonna end up winning. And it's the Caps who end up winning. Final buzzer goes off and the boys in red win three to two. I'm trying not to get my hopes up too much. I mean, it was just an exhibition game and it was Carolina without one of their top defenders, but it was just so much fun to watch. And shout out to the NHL for doing such a great job putting this on. Scotiabank Arena looked fantastic. All the LCD panels and graphics going on. The crowd sounds were legit. The horns were awesome. They actually pulled the goal horn sounds for every team across the league and put it in their system so that they could play it when that team scores. That's fun. And at times I completely forgot there was no crowd in the arena watching the game. It sounded so real. So yeah, pat on the back for the NHL. All right, unsung hero of the game, Michael Kempney. Number six had a great game, lots of shots on net, great defensive work. Eh, giveaway or two, but I think he looked fantastic, especially after coming back from a lot of injuries. And player of the game, none other than number eight, Alexander Ovechkin. Five shots on net, two goals, and an assist on the Kuznetsov goal. He looked great. And if anyone's gonna carry this team into the postseason, it's gonna be him. Not like he hasn't done that before. But what do I know? I'm just a fan. Well, that'll do it for this game. Hey, if you like this video, smash that thumbs up button. And if you enjoyed your time here, consider subscribing. I'd love to see you again. And as always, let's go Caps!